Hello. Today we're going to focus on exchange and this time around we're looking at how to figure out an equilibrium price or a competitive equilibrium price given the framework that we just looked at before. So this is an expansion directly off of the last video on our finding our contract curve. We're using the same exact setup as before, right? So let me rewrite first what's important to know from this one, which is the utility of person A is equal to XA times YA. And the utility of person B is equal to XB times YB. Also, we need to know that XA plus XB in total is equal to 30. And YA plus YB in total is equal to 10. So that's everything that we're carrying over with us from the last question. Additionally, we should also note that our price of good Y is known to be one and the price of good X is the object or what we're looking for um, by doing the process that we're about to do. Okay, so from that starting point, to find our equilibrium price, we're gonna use all of these tools at our disposal and some prior knowledge from 10A to figure out what exactly, what price we should be charging given these two consumers' preferences. So let's take a look here. First, what we're gonna to wanna to do is do our classic set MRS equal to price ratio, right? I'm sure your prior experience in 10A has taught you this by heart by now, right? Especially with these Cobb Douglas type questions, we're always setting our marginal rate of substitution equal to our price ratio. So first we're gonna say our MRS for person A is again equal to YA over XA. We're just taking the marginal rate of substitution of this utility function. And then we're going to set that equal to the price of good X over the price of good Y, which is our price ratio. Okay, from there we can make some substitutions. In fact, we can note that YA over XA is actually just equal to PX because PY is known to be one. So from there, we know that YA is equal to PX times XA. Okay, so from there, we can move on to say that our MA, and this I'm gonna use a different color for, so our MA, our income for person A is equal to PX times XA or the price that good X costs times the amount of X we purchase and then plus PY times YA. Okay, so again, we know that PY is just equal to one. So MA is really equal to PX, XA, plus YA, and then we can take our equation here that we found above, this YA equals PX, XA, and we can plug that in for our YA down here. So we can say MA is equal to PX, XA, plus PX, XA. So it's really just two PX, XA. So MA is equal to 2px times xa. And from there, we can kind of do some rearranging to solve for xa and say xa is equal to ma over 2px. Okay, so that's our idea of what amount of xa we will purchase given our income and our price. Okay, so we're gonna do a similar process to find the amount of YA we would purchase. So what we're gonna do for that is I'm gonna switch colors again, and I'm gonna say that now, let's reframe this to be in terms of XA, and we can say XA is equal to YA 
over px. Given that knowledge, I'm going to solve for the optimal amount of ya in my income. So I'm going to go back to my income. I'm going to say ma again is equal to px xa plus pyya. But this time, I'm going to plug in for xa this ya over px. I'm going to say ya over px instead of xa there. Then I'm going to still add my ya, and I'm going to note as well that this py should just be 1, so it will go away. We're multiplying by 1. From there, we can kind of cross out these px's, since they're multiplying on both the top and the bottom of the division bar. And we can say ma is equal to ya plus ya, so ma is equal to 2ya. OK, so from there, if I want to solve for the optimal amount of ya, I can say ya is equal to ma over 2. OK, so we have our optimal amount of xa and our optimal amount of ya. If we wanted to, what we could do next is solve also for our optimal amount of xb and yb using the exact same process. But we're going to save some time here and say, because everything is mirrored, because we have the same exact utility function, all our preferences are the same, we're going to get to the same result. So xb is going to be equal to mb over 2px. So we're just making these variables um, b variables instead of a variables. So we're saying xb is equal to mb over 2px now. And then yb is equal to mb over 2. Right? So these are also assumptions that we can make. And I'll make a little note of that. This is since it's mirrored. Right? So in the case that it's not mirrored, all we would have to do is go back and do this exact same process and say mb is equal to 2px times xb plus 2py times yb, and then solve from there. So we're just sol saving a bit of time since it's all mirrored anyways. OK, so from there, we're going to pull back all the way up to this equation here, xa plus xb equals 30. I'm going to rewrite that down here. I'm going to say again x a plus xb equals 30. So we know that our endowment is such that there's only 30 units of good x total in this market. From there, I can add my xa equation. I can say ma over 2px plus mb over 2px, adding in that equation for xb. All of that equals 30. That's also true. And from there, we're going to do one more expansion of things. And we're going to say first, let's look at the MA side. Our income for person A is such that it equals to PX, XA, plus PYYA, right? We've established that before. What it's also equal to is the endowment that person A receives. So if we're going all the way up to question one, person A starts with 30 units of X and zero units of Y. So I'm going to plug that into my budget constraint, and I'm going to say PX times 30 plus PY, which is one anyways, times zero. We're left with a budget that equals PX times 30. So this is also technically equivalent to our budget, right? This is equal to our MA. So what I can do is plug this in up top here for MA right there, OK? And we're going to do the same thing, the same pattern for MB. So I'm going to say MB over here. I'm going to bring this down. We're going to say MB is equal to PXXB plus PYYB. I'm going to plug in my endowment for person B, which was 0, 0,10, right? We had 0 units 
of good x and 10 units of good y. So we can say px times 0 plus 1, which is py, times our endowment of 10. So person B's income should just be 10. OK, so with this in mind, I'm going to replug everything back into that equation. And we're going to say 30px, which is my income that we found for person A, over 2px plus our MB of 10 over 2px equals our endowment of 30 total units of x. So right away, I can subtract out these px's because they're being divided by each other. And then we divide by 2 on this 30. So we're left with 15 plus 5 over px equals 30. All I did there was just divide 10 by 2. Going to subtract 15 on both sides. I get 5 over px equals 15. So 5 equals 15 px or px is equal to one third. So the price that I sell unit x at is one third of a dollar or option A.